Hey guys, and welcome to another devlog video for the Animal Behavior Kit. I've been doing really good progress on the multiplayer stuff. I have all of the different components now replicating except for one, the most complicated one. That is the companion component. That's the one that allows you to tame um, any animal. Um, so I've left that to the last, uh, kind of the last on the list just because of the complexity. Um, and I've taken a break from replication this week and I started working on some customization uh, and uh, improvements to uh, performance. So actually somebody mentioned on the forums earlier this week um, about performance. So it's funny because I've been working on that uh, for the last couple of days. So I wanted to show you uh, what I've improved. So if you recall from the first video way, way back, um, there, it, there was an option for all of the animals in your level to check the distance between themselves and the player. And if they were um, within a certain uh, distance, they would be active, right? And you could customize that distance, it was a float. If they were outside of the distance, then they would automatically become inactive and basically uh, just stay where they were, right? And that was uh, saving a lot of resources, especially if you had a really big level, right? Uh, but obviously when I first started creating this, I wasn't thinking about multiplayer, so I had to change it in a way that would include more than just the original local player. I was I was doing, you know, just get player pawn, right? Which works only for the, um, for the local player. So um, there was another problem also, which was that I was checking the distance on tick, on AI tick, which again, not very efficient. Um, so um, if you go, I don't know if I've ever shown this. This is the, the behavior tree, the generic behavior tree of uh, the ground animals, right? Um, and it can get, as you can see here, pretty complicated. Uh, there's a lot of different things, uh, including active behavior, the, all of the roaming behavior, engaged, right? Whether it's gonna flee or hide, defend, attack, etc. So there's this master service set AI state that monitors a bunch of conditions, right? Um, and I've changed the way that I'm looking at the distance through the player. So instead of doing a linear distance on tick, I've decided to use the same method that I use for the predators, right? So I'm doing a sphere trace uh, and then looking for any pawn that has the specific player tag. So now uh, you can have as many players in your level as possible. And as soon as one of the players with that tag gets near the animal, it'll be active. Otherwise, it's going to be completely inactive. And you can see here that it's a custom event. So you now have a property called player check frequency. So you don't have to have it obviously on tick. You know, ideally that would be like, you know, 60 times a second. Um, you can now have it, you know, even once a second is way better for performance, right? Uh, and I think I have the default at five seconds, right? Every five seconds, check the distance to the player, do a trace. If it doesn't find any players, it'll become inactive. And if it finds somebody, it'll just become active, right? And I've added an, an, an extra uh, function here that enables or disables all of the different components. And I'll, I'll show you guys this in a second. Um, but the whole idea uh, is that the same type of functionality I added to all the birds and all the fish, right? And the birds and the fishes, as you can see here, the flying animals are actually actors. They're not characters that are very light. And the reason for that is, again, I'm trying to keep these birds as light as possible as far as resources because they're just supposed to be kind of there for show, right? The most of the functionality is going to be with the ground animals. These birds are just there kind of to kind of to, to show, you know, to, to add to the level. So I have in this first test level that I want to show you, and again, I want to show you some performance uh, differences here. I have, how many? 500 birds. You can see here, I'm gonna zoom all the way up. You can see here, all of these little dots are birds, right? And I'm just gonna zoom into one of these guys. You can see. So you have 500 of these birds and they're all going to be flying in random directions inside this volume, which is what defines the, the, the space, right? Uh, I already have kind of the frame rate and the unit. I have a 1070, so I have a GTX 1070, pretty decent GPU, but I wanted to give you the comparison. So right now, all of these birds are going to be active, right? So they are not using the distance calculation. They're literally just active in the level, right? So if I click play here, 
you can see if I go if I look up 500 different actors moving in random directions and the frame rate right here is about 70 to 75 um, there you go you can see on the top right it's about seven let's let's just call it about 70 frames per second on a 1070 with 500 birds all acting at the same time right you're probably not going to have this use case um, in your game again they're all rendering at the same time uh, but if you ever wanted to have a scene with a bunch of birds right um, even in the worst case scenario you're looking at a pretty efficient um, blueprint now what I'll do is remember this is 70 frames per second right if I go and select all of the flying animals and I enable active on proximity right uh, and I'm going to select the radius of 20,000 units and the distance check rate at five seconds you'll see what happens now I'm gonna go ahead and click play and you can see right there that I'm at around 90 to 105 frames per second so right there is between 30 to 40 frames per second difference right between 70 to 100 worst case scenario looks like 100 110 um, and do you notice a big difference here right all of these birds every five seconds are doing a trace and uh, if, if the birds are close enough to the player, they're active, and if they're far enough, they're inactive, right? So if I go ahead and eject here and go all the way up, you'll see that the birds here close by are active, but the guys really far are completely inactive. So all of these guys right here are completely inactive because they're far, and only the birds that are close by are active. Now, obviously, if I start moving around, I'm going to zoom past here, you'll see the ones, the birds in the distance. It takes them about five seconds to do the trace, and then immediately they get active, right? So, obviously, depending on your game and how fast the player can go and, and you know, how many um, obstacles you have, you might want to tweak that setting, right? Either the frequency or the distance, right? You can make the radius really big. Uh, or you can just keep it smaller but have a, a bigger frequency. But the, the whole point here is, and now even with multiplayer, only the AI that is close by to the player will be active, saving you a lot. And you can see here, now I'm at pretty much 120 frames per second uh, in this case, because there's a lot of birds that are simply inactive, right? And this is actually the same case with the ground animals, right? This is another level and I'm going to let it kind of build the navigation. I have here, I think I have 200, I have 200 birds, 200 flying animals. And I have, how many deer do I have? 200 deer, right? So you have a little army of deer here, 200 and about 200 birds. Now the deer, all the ground animals are characters that are heavier, right? Um, and let me see, I believe they're all, let's see, already using the distance here. Yeah, run on proximity uh, and uh, 30,000 and every five seconds. So same case, I'm going to go ahead and click play here. And you can see here. Is still pretty bad again we have 200 deer and 200 birds and we're talking about about 40 frames per second right so this is absolutely worst case scenario you're also trying to render all of the deer at the same time but if I go ahead and eject you'll see that the this this group here is active but you still have a bunch of deer all around here that are inactive right um, so actually, when I did this test earlier, um, I was recording, so I was actually about 10 frames per second higher. Um, so right now I'm about 45 frames per second. Now it's about 55, right? OBS takes a little bit of um, frames. Uh, but again, it's just to give you an idea, right? So if I immediately start running towards the inactive deer, you'll see that they start immediately reacting as soon as I get close. And obviously in this test, I have this, the sprint 
go insanely fast, right? I mean, no, in, normally in the game, you, your player won't go this fast, right? So you'll have a way easier time uh, configuring your AI to, to be active by the time the player can even see uh, the mesh, right? All right, there you go. So I'm really happy with it. Um, and the other the other thing I did want to show that I kind of mentioned earlier, uh, level spawners, is the fact that before I was only um, let's see where are the animals right here I was only um, checking the distance to the player and making the the, the animal inactive right uh, and inactive is either stay in the same place or use predictive movement which I'll show that later um, but that was it right but if you had components like the need system right which has a timer right uh, the animal gets thirsty or hungry or you have the look for mate component right there's a timer every x seconds he tries to look for a partner or if you have an animal that's hungry uh, and it's a predator it's going to try to look for for prey all those different components um, they have an active component an active timer including grow old or natural death so what happened was um, that even though I would say I was making the AI inactive, all of those components kept ticking, right? So the animal could literally uh, just die out of natural death, even while inactive, right? Or an animal could grow old, right? A little cub could grow old, even while it was inactive. Uh, and that's where this little um, function comes into play. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little far here, and I believe I had it set up for a test. here oops I'm gonna go ahead and change the radius for both of these guys so run on proximity radius to activate let's make this 2000 just just to showcase what I'm talking about and the same thing here 2000 and if I just and, and they're both on on debugging right so I'm debugging the trace so you can see here that right now both animals are inactive and they're doing a trace and as long as I'm outside the trace they're basically inactive right uh, however if I look at the need system in this case nothing's happening see the hunger and the thirst are completely um, disabled and in this case this little cub has a component of uh, grow old you can see here grow old and it's supposed to grow between 10 to 15 seconds so by now you should have seen him grow but because it is inactive uh, nothing's happening so as soon as I enter uh, this guy's uh, radius I'm gonna wait a couple more seconds because remember it's every five seconds it'll it'll display uh, in an engaged behavior because now we detect that I am close by and all of the systems are now active and it should be growing pretty soon here there you go same thing with this guy as soon as I hit the radius it'll start being active and you'll see that now the hunger and the thirst are now actively ticking you can see that and as soon as I leave the radius The timer stops so again those are the little things that you don't think about uh, but then um, you know as you start testing especially for the multiplayer the traces and everything I realized wait <laughs> I'm having animals die out of natural death all the way across the map when you just want them to in a way freeze exactly the way they are right and that becomes even more important if you're trying to maintain population control and balances right you don't want animals just randomly dying uh, or growing up right uh, so that's pretty much it um, I, in addition to that I've been uh, doing some polishing and refactoring basically just tightening up the code uh, removing some uh, variables that weren't there starting to comment so very slowly trying to get things to look way nicer um, and one of those things was I, I eliminated a bunch of different sections by creating structs uh, which makes things way nicer, right? So if you see here, uh, under setup behavior, all of these different structs used to be separate sections 
for the animal, right? So the behavior details, like the feeding behavior, walk speed, max acceleration, all of this was its own separate section on the details panel, and I made it all into a struct, and now you can just collapse it and open it. Same thing for the defend behavior, that was supposed to be a separate thing. Uh, animal animations, you recall in just a few videos ago when I was showcasing the custom animations, this was its own section. Now we just have a struct and you can just, um, you can see here how I am uh, collapsing everything. Even the debug uh, used to be a section and now everything is right here in one nice section. Same thing for the general stuff. This used to be on the base class. Again, three separate sections and I have now three structs. Simulation details, which is uh, for every animal, whether it runs on proximity or always run. Radius to activate, predictive movement. Then you have things like the animal details, show the HUD, animal name, what's the animal sex, HP, etc. And even some of the death details, like how long it will take to despawn and whether you want the body to ragdoll or not, right? And in this case, I don't have a death animation for the deer, so I want it to ragdoll, right? And any additional tags that you would like to add. Right, so I collapsed literally uh, almost 10 different sections here into just two. Now you just have setup general, which is three structs, and setup behavior, and that's it. Uh, way more organized, way cleaner, and that takes a while. As you can think, uh, all of these variables were um, used in all of these different services and tasks that you see here. So I had to go through every single task here. Uh, and make sure that I was referencing the new variable inside the struct, which took forever. Uh, but I think it was all worth it. So, yeah, um, I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. I have uh, the component uh, replication stuff for the taming that I'm going to be working on next week. And I have a, an idea of how to make the birds flight a little bit more natural. And that's going to be kind of a bonus. If I can figure it out, uh, I'll get that done. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. I uh, love to hear your feedback and I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks a lot.